Hello everyone. We want to thank you today for joining us here at Oda University to discuss the topic of solder and flux application. So let's go ahead and get started with our sand cloth and our open end mesh. It depends on the application that you're using and how you feel about it. So a lot of our contractors, if they want the durability against sharp edges and they want something that's going to clean the pipe and but maybe not be as good as self-cleaning, they're going to choose our uh, sand cloth. If they're not so worried about these sharp edges, but they want more self-cleaning and good water application, they'll move into our open mesh product. If they want protection against all three, we also offer the grit pads. The grit pads are very thin. They're great at self-cleaning because of the multiple layers. And also because of the multiple layers, they're also fantastic on sharp edges. They're not going to cut as easily. And obviously they're great underwater. So the grit pad actually covers all three. So make sure you ask for those at your customer uh, locations for purchase. When we get into our fitting brushes, we offer two types of fitting brushes. We offer the Econo, which has an open area in the handle. And we also offer our premium brush, which has a plastic insert. Gives you more um, durability as you're grinding into those fittings to clean them out. The fitting brushes are offered in sizes half inch up to two inch in size. We also offer a four in one Tool. So this four in one will give me the capability to clean fittings half inch and three quarter. It's also going to allow me to clean my pipe ends with the same tool half inch and three quarter. We offer tools just for the pipe ends. That way there you're not getting those sharp edges ground down into the palm of your hand. So these here are sold separately. And also we offer the power bits. It's come in a set of half inch and three quarter easily inserted into the end of your battery drill. And that way there, if you have a lot of joints you're going to be cleaning during the day, it helps take the fatigue off of your wrist. Our solders come in one pound and half pound sizes. We have several up here on the table. This is a 97.3, for example, 97% copper, 3% tin. This is very popular down in the southwest area of our nation. We have the 95.5, which is here in front of me. We also have the silver solder. How much silver is actually in that solder? Do I got to lock it up? Somebody wants to steal it for scrap money. Well, there's actually less than 2% silver in that solder, which meets all the ASTM standards necessary to call it a silver. We have our acid cores, and we also have our rosin cores. Our acid cores are for those applications like ductwork. So a lot of our heating contractors will purchase it, and they'll use it if they're uh, connecting some uh, heating duct. We have our rosin core. Rosin is obviously an adhesive. So our electrical contractors, they're gonna choose that if they're doing those small components. And that additional rosin that's built into that uh, formula is going to allow you for better adhesion. The fluxes we're gonna talk about today. We have a number five. Our number five is very popular with the contractors. They can apply more heat to the application. It's much more user friendly. But you want to make sure you check with all of your local jurisdictions to make sure that number five is approved in that area because it is petroleum based. If it is approved, some of your inspectors may say, well, if you're using this, I want to make sure you flush those lines out properly. In order to flush the line out properly, you want to use some TSP, some trisodium phosphate. You're going to connect that into your uh, washing machine outlet box with a couple hoses and a low pressure pump. You're going to circulate it through that system for about 15 to 20 minutes. You're going to flush it out and then do a second time and that'll get rid of that residue. But like I said, you want to make sure you check with your local jurisdiction to make sure number five is okay to use. If not, you want to go into our H2O product. A lot of times people say, well, how do I tell these two are different if the labeling is, is uh, rubbed off? Well, you can see here that our number five looks a little bit more clear and our uh, H2O has a little bit more honey look to it. The H2O products are self-cleaning. So once I turn that water system on and I start running it through the faucets, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to wash away all that residue and I don't have any issues. We also have our tinning fluxes. So we have our number 95 tinning flux, which you'll see is gray in appearance. And we have our H2O tinning flux, which is also gray in appearance. They are slightly different in the shade of gray. What makes tinning flux nice is it's basically prepping the joint as you heat it. So there's small flakes of solder within this formula that as you start to heat that joint up, they're gonna to start to melt, which, you're gonna, which is gonna create even better, faster, and even solder flow throughout that joint as you assemble it together. 
Now, you want to make sure that anytime you're using a flux, before every use, you want to stir that flux. You want to make sure that the consistency from the very first swab that you take out to the very last is there, and in order to get that, you need to stir that flux every time. Also, you want to try to make sure your lids are on in place. You don't want to get debris down inside there that could possibly contaminate it. And you also, this has a two-year shelf life. So from the date of manufacture, this product here should be the same quality for you up to two years. Finally, we're going to talk about a flame pad. This flame pad, we highly recommend that you have this on your trucks because what it's going to do for you is, if I'm up against a surface that I could possibly damage due to that heat transfer, this here is going to protect that. So I don't want anybody trying this at home, but my hand is pretty important to me. So if I take this flame guard and I move this flame across this pad, I'm not going to affect my hand at all. I'm not going to feel any heat on the other side. So we always want to recommend that you have the heat pads on your truck so that you can protect those finishes that you don't want to get damaged during that soldering process. Finally, we're going to move in a small apparatus here that we put together. And we're going to make sure that we clean the end of the pipe. We're going to also make sure that we clean the inside of this fitting. So that's already been done for me. I'm going to go ahead and pull my number five flux out with a flux brush. Now, you don't have to put a lot on. All you need to do is just cover the outside edge of this pipe surface. I don't need any big globs on here at all. I have a, just a very light coating. That's going to be all I need. I'm also going to make a few swirls inside of my fitting. That's all I need. I don't need to have big gobs and goops in there because as I heat this, what's going to happen is that flux is going to continue to activate, flow down through the pipe, and it's going to clean that surface. As it's cleaning that surface, now the solder is going to stick to it. It's going to want to follow it during that process. Another thing to remember is heat transfer. So a lot of folks will go ahead and they'll apply heat in a specific area. They'll put that solder on the other side of the pipe and they'll wait for it to flow. Well, the issue is on this side of the pipe where that heat is constant, it's going to create a flash. So it's actually going to burn out the flux. It's going to build up that carbon. The solder is not going to flow in that area whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and start off. I'm going to pull out a manageable amount of solder off of my roll. I'm going to bend the end in so now I have complete control over where I'm putting it. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to apply my torch, and what I want to do is I want to start off by applying some heat to one side of the fitting down near the base of the fitting. Once I get some heat on that side, I'm going to transfer my heat back to the other side. Now once I get this side heated up, I'm going to find that my solder is going to start to flow. Once my solder starts to flow, then I can go ahead and I can transfer my heat to the other side. So now that I have flow on that side, I'm going to go ahead and transfer my heat. You can see the solder is going to flow to this side, and now I have a finished joint. One thing to remember is flux is an acid, so I want to make sure that I clean that flux off that surface. I don't want to do it while it's still molten. I want to make sure not to disturb that joint until that solder actually sets up. Once that solder sets up and it starts to cool down a little bit, I just want to take a clean, dry rag and then I want to wipe that joint before it cools down completely. Once the pipe cools down completely and you try to wipe it off, all you're going to do is smear the flux and then you're going to get more coverage in that area, which means it's going to be even harder to clean. So once this gets down to a manageable temperature, I go ahead, I clean it off real good, and then I don't have to worry about any flux uh, repercussions in the future that could lead to potential leaks. Uh, you can always tell if you cleaned your joints very well because there's normally a green residue that's left over at the end, um, which tells you that you didn't clean the uh, outside of the fitting very well. Okay, so we hope this uh, small session on flux and solder application has been helpful, and we want to thank you for your time today.